with 32 damn sockets fully populated with 16 gig of, of memory sticks, and that's not the maximum capacity. The maximum capacity is 48, like 4 terabytes. And then take the same DIMMs and load, fully load the Intel system. And we're running against the highest performance Intel two socket server available today. The Broadwell E5 2699A, A is important, uh, fully tricked out. And this is a commercially available system. You can see it. By the way, you can see this demo. Uh, for yourself in the room, uh, breakout room upstairs to be set up uh, all afternoon. And so this is what we're going to show you. We're going to show you the best that we have to offer against the best that the competitor has today. And the workload that we're going to use is a uh, seismic workload. And this is a workload that is, for those of you that, uh, that, that care about such things, it's a discrete 3D Laplacian transform across a billion point grid, modeling flows within a uh, reservoir. So we're looking for uh, oil. And this application is pretty representative of other, uh, uh, other technical and engineering uh, applications and workloads as well. And so what we're going to do now so I want to go down, or go up, sorry, go up to a live shot of Joshua uh, up there with, uh, with the systems. And uh, what we're going to do is we're first going to show you Naples running against that tripped out Broadwell system, that tripped out Intel system. But we're going to tie one arm behind our back. I'm going to show you Naples running in the green. The Intel system in the blue and Naples will be limited to 44 physical cores, 22 cores per socket. Go ahead and let's kick it off, Joshua. And what you're going to see is this is not going to be particularly graphically interesting, I'm afraid. Um, you know, I think Jim and Lisa had all the cool graphics, but this is pretty cool results because we're running this, this analytics package against a billion grid. Um, a problem, and the, you'll notice the Intel system just started to finish loading the data and beginning its iterations, where it takes ten iterations to resolve that uh, adequate residual, and the AMD system has already completed. So it completed the load, which we're not even going to count in the results we're going to show you in a minute, and then we completed ten iterations for this massive data set. To, to resolve this 3D Laplacian, this 3D Laplacian transform. And so when you take a look, we have to wait a little bit for the Intel system to uh, finish. When you take a look at the result, we'll see same number of cores and the memory frequency of the AMD system turned down to 1866, which is on the Intel system. When you take a look at the result, what you'll see is we're about 2x faster if we tie one hand behind our back. And on this workload, it truly requires a lot out of the cores, a lot out of the memory, and a lot out of the other. But let's move on to the next uh, demo. And in here, I'm going to untie my arms. I'm going to show what Naples can do if you turn on all 32 cores. Go ahead and kick it off, Joshua. If you turn on all 32 cores, you bring the memory frequency up to our POR frequency that we'll have with it. I think you started the AMD system a little bit later. That's okay. We, we can give them a head start. And you fully unleash the beast. And so you notice again, the Intel system is just now starting its iterations, and the AMD system is almost done. And so this is, by the way, for those of you that care, this is running in both 16, I think 1604, 16 something. A GCC compiled, you know, the systems are as identical as we can possibly make them, running exactly the same application. So we're trying to have a fair fight, but I'm afraid the fight's not very fair. And so uh, as we wait for the Intel system to conclude, I think you can get the general idea of what the result is going to be. And that's that we're about 
two and a half times faster than the fastest, the fastest Intel system. Now, look, not every workload looks exactly like this, but we do think this is a workload that's pretty representative. It requires uh, pretty much 100% CPU utilization on all the cores, makes maximum use of the memory, makes maximum use of the I.O. A lot of applications look just like this. Now let's, I think we've moved on to the larger data set. Um, whoops, go back. We'll put up the, uh, the results slide too early. We've moved on to the larger data set, but if I'm seeing this correctly, which is we've increased the data set size to 4 billion samples, a larger reservoir size. And as we're trying to load the, the 4 billion uh, sample problem or 4 billion grid problem into the Intel system, I think what you'll see here in a second is it's unable to load. Because the reason we're showing this in the Intel, the AMD system runs quite happily. The reason we're showing this is on the memory side, we're not just increasing the performance, we're also increasing the capacity. And so we're offering 33% more capacity as well as 120% the performance of the, the Intel system. And so in this case, we were able to uh, uh, get through the problem in 63 seconds, and Intel had insufficient memory to load. And so, again, first demonstration of, of AMD Naples uh, for you. But we think this is representative of many of those. We're incredibly excited with what Mark and the team have brought, which is not just a core, but the rest of the components that produce a truly balanced system and unveil real world very high performance. But we're not just about server chips. 